So, all right. So you got all this going on, um, referring out all this business, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that at some point you're just reconnecting the dots of, well, why am I referring this business out instead of having my own agents working for me and, you know, right where I could keep more of the dollar, have more control and, you know, not chasing down referrals and sometimes it's tough to get paid on all of those. And, you know, so, so, I mean, is that how the, the team evolved? Well, I, I basically had the, the team concept because I had somebody on the other side of the lake that I referred all of the leads over to. So I didn't have to do a referral um, paperwork every single time. And I, I don't know, I, I probably referred out a bunch that I never got paid for because I wasn't good at the follow-up. So yeah. like not having the team hurt me in that aspect. And I do a lot of um, luxury stuff. So a teardown on Lake Winnipesaukee is about a million bucks. My highest sales, seven million. Um, and so there's, there's some of that stuff. So when you're focusing on the luxury stuff, it's more time and effort. So you don't have a lot of time for the buyers that are chasing around and, and uh, doing some of the residential stuff. Um, so it was more out of just needing the time and uh, having the efficiency of strategic agents kind of around the lake and in, in different areas. Um, so I really, like I did, my average price point when I was just doing it on my own was about a million dollars. And I do, as I, you know, probably 2009, 10, 11, somewhere in there, it was be 20 sales, 20 million bucks, which I mean, that, that's a, a good living, especially for New Hampshire or a small little state, but the cash flow is just awful. You know, you'd get a big check and then I wouldn't get a check for two months and then a giant check and then I wouldn't get a check for a month. And so from a cash flow standpoint, it, it just, it wasn't, my wife would rather me make half the money I was and get a steady paycheck just the way her personality is. So it, it caused stress in that way too. So in about 10 years into it, um, Keller Williams was, was after me and the, the owner of the market center was after me. And basically he would take me out, out to lunch. Like, you know, Keller Williams is a big recruiting company and really everything's kind of white noise when you're in real estate, everybody recruits, everybody, everybody's got the best technology. Everybody's got the best network. You know, after a while it's like, it's all just the white noise in the background. So this guy was after me, take me out to lunch. I would let him pay for lunch cause I didn't want him to feel like he's getting yeah. anywhere out with me. And, <laughs> And then he caught me at a weak moment, um, February, I think it was in the winter of 2013. And he said, I want to fly you to Texas. I want you to go to our franchise systems orientation, which is basically their owner's training. And he said, um, I want you to go through that. And I said, Nate, it, I'm not going to make a move to your company. You know, I'm, I'm doing, I was number nine in the state at the time. I like the people I was working with. Uh, I really didn't, I, I, and this is answering your question. I really didn't know about the team aspect to it because I just wasn't introduced to it yet. Um, but I kind of had the team that I didn't know in place with the agents around. And so I said, Nate, I'm, I'll go to Texas. I'll take your training. I got a good buddy that moved to Texas that I haven't seen for a while. So if I can go see him, if I can take your training, and if you understand that I'm not making a move to Keller Williams, I'll fly down there with you. He said, all right, under those conditions, I'll still, still want you to come. So I flew down there and the, and the joke kind of, and actually I listed a condo on that Friday thinking that when I came back, it was going to be business as usual. I was, I really had no idea I was going to make a move, but I mean, to his credit, he's, he knows that 85% of the people that go to that meeting actually make a switch. So it wasn't a huge gamble on his part, but the joke is day one, I said, so if I made a move and day two, I was saying, you know, when I make a move to Keller Williams, cause I it just, they kind of laid it all out. And I just saw that team aspect to it. Just saying, Oh, that's what I want. Cause I'd rather make money through people than, than just making a whole bunch of money on my own. I've got three kids. I mean, yeah. the joke on vacation was to get the picture of me by the pool with the phone in my hand or me on the beach yeah. with the phone in my hand and stuff like that. Yeah. It's one of those things. And, 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 you know, you can, you can earn a lot of money in real estate, but it's so easy to pigeonhole yourself into having a high paying job, you know, right. Until you grow a team or, or grow the brokerage model, wherever we can start leveraging some of this stuff out. So this was the, the owner franchise training. Like, did you, did you become a, a franchisee or did you just join Keller Williams and start building your team as an agent? Like which route did you end up going? So I, I just joined it as, as an agent, but I had tried to help um, my uh, previous boss in growing his company, like helping develop the website. Cause I had that background and, and just doing, and I like to help the other agents. So I do training on what little I knew, uh, and helping them get up and running the newer agents and things like that. So I knew 
the stresses and the pressure points of being an owner and, and knowing how hard it is to run a real estate company. And this was 2013. So that wasn't a great year in real estate. And it was funny because I'm sitting in this room full of owners. I'm like, why is everybody happy? You know, aren't you guys losing money? What, what's going on here? Uh, they all had the nice watches on. They were all arguing who's going to pay for the dinner. And uh, it, it just was like a different atmosphere. So I said, there's got to be something that that's working. here. so I came back and, and my determination was to start a team and, and go that route. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, I mean, Keller Williams has really revolutionized the team model, you know, um, before KW came on, I mean, you heard of teams, you know, right. Yeah. Um, but nothing usually, like usually two agents teaming up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was nothing. And now with what Keller Williams is, is, is you know, what Gary Keller, the, the foresight that he has, you know, now you're seeing, you know, 50, you know, I had like Bob Lacido on the show not too long ago, who's a good friend of mine. And I mean, doing 17 million a year in, 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 you know, commissions and, you know, 55 agents. And now with all the expansions and, uh, um, you know, they, they've, they've, they've got such a great training program. But what I always commend Gary Keller for the most is to retrain agents to think of what is possible. It doesn't need to be done the traditional way of real estate. Right. It's like, man, you can really take this big and even leverage the brokerage without having to become a broker owner and, and taking on that risk and have those lower profit margins and things like that.